My name is Joseph Edward Hibden Jr. I'm an associate professor in mathematics at Northeastern Illinois University. I don't believe I was always good at math. I was a little bit better than average when I was younger. Um, I think as I got older, I was not as good <laughs> when I realized more and more um, knowledge of math. Um, so yeah, I was not always good at math when I was younger. I think the first step was when I realized there's a connection between mathematics and solving real world problems. So I recall in college being a math major uh, and I was also a chemistry minor and I was taking modern physical chemistry at the same time I was taking PDEs. And I realized they were connected together. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can use PDEs with chemistry. Like how cool is that? There, there, there's a relationship. It's not, uh, I was always, I enjoyed the math, but it was too abstract for me. And the PDEs with uh, chemistry really made that bridge and got me excited about doing mathematics. And so that's when I realized, like, maybe I, this is something I can do in the future. And now I have to figure out how to do that and how to get to there. But that that was that first step. The type of mathematics I do or I was trained in um, was mathematical modeling of combustion. So that is where we use uh, differential equations or partial differential equations to uh, understand the physics behind fires or flames. Um, in particular, I focused on flames that were in microgravity systems or the effect of uh, certain assumptions that are typically made and modified the equations to see if we better align with what's observed in the lab. However, <laughs> as I've transitioned now into higher ed as a professor, I do a lot more work on increasing diversity in STEM with the bias in math, because I want more people to do math. Um, and then a lot of data science and social justice work. And so th that's a lot of where my research is now. So there's been a transition um, throughout my work. Some of the difficulties I had um, as a student was wanting to quit many, many times, but most of it was personal. So like in college, I was worried about financially support from my parents. But I think one of the most telling things was when I was in grad school. I was a first year grad student at Northwestern. And I came in and I thought everybody was like myself, a first generation college student. I knew there was no other um, um, Native Americans um, in the program which was fine, um, but I had support from Northwestern um, administration. However, <laughs> I remember sitting multiple times studying and realizing these people are all, I felt like they were all smarter and knew way more than me and I was not prepared. So I remember going back home um, after the semester and meeting with a family friend. Uh, he, um, he was also my supervisor when I worked construction and we were playing pool and he's like, how's it going? And I was like, I think I need to quit. And he's like, you can't, you're not allowed to quit. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you don't realize you are in a very prime position to be a leader, to get a degree and represent people like yourself in positions that are not normally represented. And he's like, you can't quit you're not allowed to quit and I'm sorry the and he, and he didn't usually apologize like I know this is a lot of burden but it, it has to be you've been given this opportunity you've been given this chance that many people like yourself aren't given you know first generation college students you know uh, Native Americans typically aren't represented in the mathematical uh, fields and he says you have a responsibility and I think I returned <laughs> uh, to grad school with a different perspective. And I think every time I thought about quitting or giving up, I always have that in the back of my head. Even now, like that voice um, is still there. And there are many times still, <laughs> even as a social professor, I think about, uh, I, I, I have thought about quitting, but I realized like my job is to help others like myself that have come from my pathway.
my proudest accomplishments besides my kids I have two lovely kids and being being with my wife and everything like that um actually it's a story I tell my students a lot uh, my proudest accomplishment is not my PhD it's not a paper or a grant or getting tenure none of that it was actually getting my bachelor's degree and uh, <laughs> It's so interesting because a lot of people are like, it's whatever that highest degree, but that bachelor degree was really hard. Uh, there are many times that I had some difficulties in figuring out what I was going to do with myself, but sitting there and realizing my parents were there to, and it was my parents' first time visiting a college too. Um, so I, my undergrad was at College of Holy Cross, and it was their first time to visit was when I graduated, and I was so proud of that. And I remember sitting there like crying because I was like, I earned this and nobody's going to take this away from me, you know? And so like, that was, it was awesome. And it's still to this day. I mean, besides my kids and marrying my wife, it is like the number one thing to me. And so I tell that to my students, <laughs> especially those that are graduating. I'm like, you're going on to PhDs. You're going on to these great jobs. Cherish this moment. I would say my fit first role model in terms of mathematics was uh, Catherine Roberts, who was teaching partial differential equations and ordinary differential equations. And she told the story that uh, you can go to grad school and it's paid for in mathematics. And all I remember was like, sucker, these people are suckers. I'm, I'm doing this. And so I remember sitting down with Catherine and um, I was like, okay, tell me what I have to do. What? And she kind of laid out a plan and stuff like that to help me. And then I realized, like, looking at, um, as I continued my journey, I'd still go and talk with her about certain things. And she, you know, gave me many opportunities, not only to go to grad school, I went to where she went, but also working, uh, doing some really high-end committee work at the American Mathematical Society. My advice to students, to anybody involved in mathematics or academia or anything in general is just be who you are and surround yourself with people that accept who you are. Uh, you, it seems like it might be easy to isolate your identity from your mathematics, but it's not. And you want to make sure that you work with people and engage with people that except you for who you are and it's going to make your mathematics a lot better and a lot happier and if you can't find those people you know <laughs> that we're around we we do exist and we're just happy to talk about mathematics but also talk about who you are as an individual as a person and i think that is important that you belong